It's been a while since I made a video. I haven't made a video in probably about three months. I've just been busy. I kind of took a break. They don't have the time uh, to really sit down here for you know 10, 15 minutes at a time, which is more like an hour after setting things up and making multiple cuts. And to give you guys the videos that I said I was going to be doing, and again, I kind of told, I kind of took a social media break too. I was off Instagram for a while, off TikTok. I was kind of just not really worrying about it too much because over time it just kind of wears on. Anyways. That aside, I'm back. I'm back to making long form content. I'm actually shooting this on an iPhone 15 Pro right now. I usually shoot on a Fujifilm X-T4 with a nice 18 to 55 millimeter lens, which is great. I love it, but I decided I'm gonna try and shoot this on my iPhone. But anyways, guys, let's hop into the real reason you're here, and that is to learn about MEPS. Once you decide that you wanna join the Marines or any branch for that matter, but more importantly, the Marines, that's what this channel is all about. But once you decide that this is what you wanna do, and you wanna take the next step of becoming a Marine, you have to go to this place called MEPS. Now, MEPS is the military entrance processing station where everybody goes when they are taking the next steps to enlist into the military. If you've never enlisted into the military, you've never been to MEPS. And if you were in the military today, you always went to MEPS before you enlisted. There was no workaround or anything like that. And those are the people who are going to officially qualify you mentally and physically for service in the Marine Corps. That means if you do something there to disqualify yourself, again, if you do something there to disqualify yourself, you've done it to yourself because I'm gonna give you some tips today to help make sure you don't do that and give you the best possible chance of success once you get to MEPS. And we're gonna talk about a few other things that you need to know before going there as well. So with that being said, after you sit down with your recruiter and you go through all of your paperwork, go through your entire enlistment package, all 54 pages of that lovely brown folder, now your recruiter is gonna schedule you to go down to MEPS. Now this can happen one or two ways. The first way is called SDP, which is same day process, which means you do your ASVAB test or PICAT and your medical physical all on the same day. Take your test in the morning and you'll do your physical in the afternoon. And if all is well, you'll come back that day as a Marine Corps pulley. That is what's called a same day process. It's not as common, but it can be. It's for those who are in school sometimes, those who will have a, you know, a really tight work schedule. So if you're interested in that, let your recruiter know and they get you set up. But the most common method is called a two day process. And this is when you do your mental test on the first day, your ASAP or your PICAT. And then on the second day, that's when you actually do your medical physical. Day one, when you do your ASAP or your PICAT, it goes one of two ways. If you and your recruiter set you up on a PICAT, which is the same thing as an ASAP before you went down to MEPS, which means you took that with your recruiter at their office. When you go to MEPS, you'll do what's called a test confirmation, which means off that exact same 10 section test as the ASVAB, they're gonna randomly generate about 30 questions give you those same 30 questions to answer to make sure you didn't cheat and whatnot. And if you answer them properly, you will then keep the score you got at your recruiter's office, which is really great and convenient because if you pass, you already know what you're confirming and you already know what your score is ahead of time. Whereas if you don't do that, or if you do and you didn't like the test score that you got, you can opt to not use it and then do the full ASVAB instead. And whatever score you get that day is the score you keep. If you don't score a 31 or higher, it means you're not qualified. Therefore, you will not enlist until you pass. So again, make sure you're studying, which go back and watch my, one of my other videos about how to pass the ASVAB 2023. And the reason why you're not passing the ASVAB, those are good nuggets of information you guys can use to help get you prepared for this test. Once you're done, you'll hang out at mess for a little bit. And then sometime throughout the day, you'll get back on a shuttle. You'll head back to the hotel, hang out for us at night, wake up the next day, day two, go back to MEPS. And at this point, you're gonna do your medical physical. But before you actually do the physical portion, you have to pee in a cup to make sure you have no drugs in your system, whether you're from California where weed is legal or you're from a state where it's illegal. Either way, you can have no drugs in your system. And if you get caught with any trace amounts of drugs in your system, including weed, I've said this three times because some people think just because it's legal they can do it, you will be disqualified for a minimum of 45 days, which means your entire process stops. You do not pass go. You do not enlist. You do not collect $200. Everything stops. Then you go back to MEPS, pee in a cup again. And then once that test is good, then you submit a waiver 
and then we're waiting more time again it's just a big pain in the ass don't do it to your recruiter and don't do it to yourself and if they're worth a damn they'll make sure you're clean before you go down but again just keep that in mind because it's happened and it happens often after you pee in a cup everything is good from there you're going to get in line and do a hearing test right if you're deaf it's a problem you're probably going to get disqualified but if not you'll do a hearing test make sure everything is good and then you're going to move in a little queue a little line and go through various phases but the most important one is the medical physical part this is where you sit down with a doctor an actual doctor and they go over your medical history now speaking about medical history before you went to maps right let's go ahead and just rewind a little bit before you go to maps you sit down with your recruiter and you fill out what's called a dd2807 or medical questionnaire form this is where you should be open and honest to make sure there are no surprises because nobody, and I mean nobody, especially your recruiter, likes surprises. And when they get caught off guard, it's just a bad day for you. But more importantly then, when you sit down with your recruiter, be open and honest about your medical history. If they're like from the time you were born, a little baby until now, have you ever had this or that, broken a bone, been on any type of medication, X, Y, and Z, seen a counselor, whatever. If the answer is yes, that's okay. Tell them, they'll document it, all is good. It's when you don't say something and then the doctors at MEPS catch it and then they're trying to comb through your, you know, your, your medical history now with a fine tooth comb, they're most likely going to disqualify you for whatever it is that was that could have been okay and cleared because you're wasting their time and you weren't open and honest from the beginning. There are times where they will clear it depending on how severe or not, but again, why risk that? That's up to you but you should be letting your recruiter know because you should trust your recruiter, that's their job. And if you don't trust them, that's a problem and you should probably find someone you trust or find out why you don't and fix that before going to MEPS. Trust me, I've seen it, just trust me. Now, if there is something in your medical history that's a problem, no big deal. You broke a bone, hell, you shattered this, you have your Iron Man, you got 10 plates, bolts, screws in your arm, cool man. Well, now we have to spend what's called a complex pre-screen. Not a big deal, it's just telling the doctors ahead of time Hey man, this guy, gal, whatever, has something wrong with them. I'm letting you know ahead of time so they can look at your medical records and make sure, hey, are you good? Or hey, maybe, hey man, this guy's not good. Go ahead and send me the documents from the hospital explaining this arm, this surgery, whatnot. We send that ahead of time. They review it. They say, hey, now you're good to come down to MEPS. Cool. You already told them about it. They said, cool, it might take an extra week to go down, but that's okay because now you're cleared to go down. So when they are talking to you in that little one-on-one -on -one conversation, they're like, hey, yeah, I see you broke your arm. Yep, oh, you documented on your, on your form because they're gonna pull off that exact same form that you and your recruiter sat down and filled out. Yep, you documented it here, I see it here. They match up, all is good. We cleared you, no big deal. Now they might find something else because there's this beautiful, wonderful program now. It's called Genesis. Okay, and it sees all. It's at the all seeing eye, really. Up to 90% of your medical history, all the way from you were a little baby, all the way until now. Whereas before, years ago, if you didn't tell your recruiter, they didn't know, the doctors didn't know, no one knew, and you could probably get away with things. Whereas now, if you don't tell your recruiter, the doctors will see that, and then that's what I'm talking about. Your recruiter's getting surprised, getting caught off guard, and things just get kind of weird. So again, be open and honest, everything's good. So you sit down with a doctor, they make sure you're physically qualified for the military. And if you are, great. The doctor puts a little, you know, cue on our little tracker that we see, and now you are medically qualified for the Marines. Awesome. You pass your test, check. You're medically qualified, check. But that's not the end of the road. Most people think qualified on both of those, all is good. But now you see the final boss. And the final boss is that MEPS liaison. He's a recruiter working at MEPS. He's the final boss because that person or those people can still disqualify you if you say something you shouldn't say. For instance, if you smoked weed 50 times and you never told your recruiter, so he or she never documented on your paperwork, and you go to MEPS and they ask if you've done that and you say yes, that could potentially disqualify you. Granted, there's a waiver for it, but again, now you're telling on yourself when you shouldn't have. Or let me put a real world scenario out there. Let's say you just got a speeding ticket or a DUI and you did not tell your recruiter because you thought you were being slick. You go down there, they start asking about police involvement, things like that, and you accidentally slip up and mention one of the two. You have just 
temporarily disqualified yourself until one, you pay off that ticket. If it's like a speeding ticket, like literally on the spot. And if you don't, do not pass go, do not enlist, you're done until you do, most likely at a later time. Or if you have like, a, I don't know, a felony DUI when you did something stupid and you thought you could hide it, but you didn't, now you're getting kicked out of MEPS because that's a showstopper right there. You go back, again, not as a pulley, you did not enlist, you gather up all that paperwork, you give it to your recruiter, submits for a waiver, and now we pray that waiver gets approved because you've just jeopardized your future as a Marine by not disclosing these things ahead of time so we can do our jobs ahead of time to make sure you are taken care of. So again, don't surprise your recruiter. Make sure you're open and honest and upfront with everything as well because that final boss MEPS liaison can still disqualify you. Now, if you are honest and everything does go well, guess what? They review your paperwork, make sure you signed everything, make sure everything that us as recruiters told you is true, which it always should be. And from there, they take you and place you in a separate room and you wait with everyone else who is physically, mentally qualified and ready for the next step. And then you take your oath of enlistment. That's when one of the officers at MEP puts you in a room. In the back, you have all the military branch flags. You have the American flag in there. You all stand like a little formation. When they're done, you are officially enlisted into the Marine Corps and you are now a pulley in the Marine Corps delayed entry program and everything is check, 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 check. You have completed MEPs. You have passed the test. All is well and from there, you go back, you're happy, your recruiter's happy, his boss is happy, everyone's happy. And then you talk about the next steps when it comes to jobs, boot camp dates, and whatnot, which that's for another video in the future. But again, that is MEPS in a nutshell. That's what you can expect when you go to MEPS in the future. And if you've already been to MEPS, you know exactly what I'm talking about because you've already lived it. Guys, so I hope this video is informative. I hope it helps. I haven't seen another video out there that actually explains this in depth, but hopefully if you're getting ready to go down to MEPS with any branch, but more importantly, the Marine Corps, you watch this and know what to do, but more importantly, you know what not to do to make sure you are good and there are no surprises at the end of the day, guys. So with that being said, that's all I got. I'm back, more videos coming more frequently than psh, three months. Hope you learned something. Share this with somebody who's getting ready to enlist. If you have a crazy map story, please comment below and let me know because I have a few. I might make a little reel or something in the future talking about them. But if you have any crazy map stories, comment below and I'll go ahead and pin the uh, crazy one I see. But until next time.